Gather around my children, this is Travis, bringing you another Magic the Gathering commentary produced by Green Carbon Media. Today we have the blue-white deck, Azurius Ascendant, being played by Spoons on the left side, and we have the black-red deck, Rakdos Bloodsport, played by J-Rags on the right side. Now, I do want to address some comments we do have down in the comment section of some of the YouTube videos. Hunter says, awesome gameplay of some of the great throwback decks. Thanks, Hunter. Definitely appreciate that. Felipe says, "We will up. will you upload a Azurius Ascendant video? Felipe, your dreams and your answers have been fulfilled because today we have Azurius Ascendant played by Spoons, and I hope you enjoy it. We also have Sheldon. He says, I prefer the old style of your commentary better. And Sheldon, I would have to agree with you. Curtis was an extremely amazing and talented caster. He knew his stuff and he was able to streamline games to perfection and his sultry voice was pretty amazing. Me on the other hand, I stumbled through my words like you just heard. And uh, I say um a lot and I say like a lot. And there's a few syllables, adjectives, and things that I describe games as, as not being as good as Kurt. But hopefully you'll roll with me, Sheldon, and maybe leave some comments on the future of how we can improve the videos. So. Let's get right into the game. These guys have been playing just for a few minutes now, and you see that Spoons has played two lands already, on different turns, obviously, but he does have a few options available to him. He has the Azurius First Wing, which is a 2-2 card. Very good to get out on the field early because this is going to be one of Spoon's main attackers. He also has Azurius Guild Mage, which is a card that's going to provide a lot of utility for him. Both these decks have their own Guild Mages. Azurius has the blue-white Guild Mage, and Rakdos has the black-red Guild Mage. And likewise, Simic, which is another um, deck in this particular Dissension set, has the blue-green. But we're not playing with Simic today. We're playing with the black-red Rakdos Bloodsport, and we're playing with the blue-white Azorius Ascendant. Now, j Rex taps down two lanes and simply plays as Gob Hobble Rats. Gob Hobble Rats is not going to be able to attack because it does not have haste like most red creatures do, and a lot of black-red creatures as well share that haste mechanic. So j Rex is going to pass his turn back over to Spoons, who plays a third land. Now, this is going to activate a lot of his creatures. So, he has the options to play, like we saw that Azorius Guild Mage, but now he's able to play a few additional creatures. Right now he's looking at that Stoic Mithra. It's a 5-5 creature with Defender and Flying. When Stoic Mithra blocks, you have to sacrifice Stoic Mithra. So it does a ton of damage and is a great defender, but it's kind of like a one-time deal. Now he also has that Soul Sworn Jury, which is a 1-4 creature and it's also a defender. You can see some of the cards in here are have a little bit of a theme. A lot of defenders for the blue-white Ascendant deck. Felipe, I think you know this, and you also probably know that there's a forecast ability in there that a lot of these cards share. So Felipe, you must be in love with the control deck, you must be in love with forecast, and you must be in love with decks that can defend. Now Spoons is attacking J-Rags with two damage coming in in the air. The first wing has flying and the Gobhobble Arrests do not. So the Gobhobble Arrests are not going to be able to block that first wing and they're going to sweep in there, peck one of J-Rags' eyeballs out and do two damage to him. That's going to lower J-Rags' health down to 18. Spoons is going to pass his turn back over to J-Rags, who is going to... He's doing this out of order, ladies and gentlemen. I'm going to preface that for a second. He's going to lay down a swamp and he's going to draw his card. Now, I believe I didn't see it what he drew, but he does have access to a few cards here. Ignorous Bliss and Rakdos Signet. But instead, he's going to tap down two lands, and he's going to instead opt to play his Gob Hobbler Rat. So he's got two on the field right now. These are two two creatures with the Hellbent mechanic. Now, you might be asking yourself, what is Hellbent? I'll get into that. I'll get into what Hellbent is in just a moment. j Rice is going to attack with his 2-2 Rat, but Spoons is simply going to block with his Soul Sworn Jury, which is a 1-4 Defender. So, as you guys know, 2-2 isn't going to do anything to that 1-4, and the 1-4 isn't really going to do anything to that Gob Hobbler Rat, except for prevent two damage from hitting Spoons directly. Now j Rags passes his turn over to Spoons, who has drawn a very, very interesting card. Minister of Impediments. It's a simple 1-1 one, one card for three mana, and it has additional utility for Spoons. You may tap target creature. This is an excellent card for stalling out 
giant creatures or just a creature that has uh, amazing abilities. I mean, not necessarily tap ability, not necessarily activated abilities, but tap abilities. You can tap them down and make them null and void. You can see that Spoons is going to fly in there with his Azurius first wing. 2-2 two -two creature with flying and protection from enchantments. That means that J Rags can't enchant this creature and Spoons can't en enchant this creature as well. And Spoons has a few enchantments in his deck that benefit his creatures greatly. Now J Rags he can combat that first wing. He does have that demon's gesture, which he should be able to play because he does have a swamp in hand. He has two swamps, actually. He's going to play that swamp. That's going to give him access to four mana. That four mana is going to make that demon's gesture activated. Well, he's going to be able to play that demon's gesture. The demon's gesture is a 2 2 creature with fine and the keyword ability Hellbent. Now, this Hellbent ability is going to give the demon gesture so much fuel to deal with that first wing. So imagine, J Rags taps down his four mana here, and I think that's what he's gonna do. He's tapping down three here. He's gonna tap down that mountain, and he's going to play that demon gesture. This is perfect, and this is exactly what J Rags needs to do, especially when it comes to the defense of that first wing that's flying in there. Demon gesture is a flyer. First wing is a flyer. That means they can both block each other, but I think J Rags needs to play that instant card, Ignorance Bliss. This is gonna give that demon gesture Hellbent, and we'll get into that discussion in just a second. While J-Rags goes in with two of his Gobhobble Rats, one of the Gobhobble Rats, again, is going to be blocked by that Soul Sworn Jury. However, the other Gobhobble Rats is going to get in there, sneak in through the rat hole, and bite at Spoons' ankles, lowering Spoons' health to 18. Now, we're going to get into that Demon's Gesture in just a second, and a strategy that J-Rags can implore to take out that pesky first wing on J-Rags' next turn. So on Spoon's side, he does have some availability to Fate's Feathers now. This is a creature enchantment card. When Fate's Feathers is put on the battlefield, you gain four health. That's gonna that could potentially raise Spoon's health back up to 22. But we'll see if he plays Fate's Feathers or if he gets his uh, some additional creatures out on the field. And that's exactly what he's doing. He's gonna get that Minister of Impediments out on the field, working for him with extreme vengeance because that Minister of Impediments. Well, it doesn't attack, and it doesn't even block, but what it does is it taps creatures. It's a constant source of tapping creatures. j Rags definitely has cards in his deck that can take out Minister of Impediments and can deal with the first wing, but let's see if j Rags draws those cards. Instead, he doesn't draw a card that can necessarily deal with those creatures straight up. He draws his Sadistic Argamage. It's a 3-1 creature. Um, and it has special abilities if it dies. We might get into Sadistic Argamage a little bit later, but let me tell you about the strategy that J-Rag should be Im imposing on that first wing. So J-Rag shouldn't attack with the Demon Jester right here. Instead, he should save that Ignorance Bliss. It's an instant card. He should save it for defense. So he should use Ignorance Bliss, and what that's gonna do is exile all J Rags' cards face down. That's gonna make him hellbent. When J Rags doesn't have any cards in his hand, he becomes hellbent. His creatures all benefit from that ability. They all have that keyword that are on the field right now. The rats, the demon, and now the ragamuffin. The demon gets plus two, plus one if J Rags is hellbent. That's gonna make that demon a four, three. The Azorius first wing is a two, two. If J-Rex blocks with the Demon Jester against that first wing, that means that that first wing is going to die and the G Demon Jester is not. And that's gonna give j Rag some additional value. Not only does Ignorance Bliss make you exile your cards face down, but at the end of your turn, you're able to draw a card. And this, this is a mistake. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a mistake right now, and I think Spoons is going to capitalize on it. You can see that J Rags actually went in there with his Demon Jester, which is a total mistake. He should not have done that. So, yes, what Spoons is going to do, he's going to use his Stoic and Mifra, a 5 5, to block the Demon's Jester, a 2 2. When Stoic and Mifra blocks, you have to sacrifice it. You, you have to sacrifice it. And it looks like. It looks like they're not done here. They're still assigning damage. He's going to use that Soul Sworn Jury, the 1 4 creature, to block the Gob Hobbler Rats, a 2 2 creature. That means that the other Gob Hobbler Rats is going to get in there, do additional 2 damage to Spoons, lowering itself to 16. The Stoic of Mifra does die because it did block, and the Demon Jester dies as well because it was a 5 5 versus a 2 2. The Demon Jester took a hit and it dies. No other cards died. Spoons took an additional 2 damage, and 
he has ways, Spoons has ways to mitigate this damage. He has that Fate's Feathers. Ladies and gentlemen, remember it's a creature enchantment card. When it enters the field, you gain four health. So Spoons can go right back up to 20 health if he wants to. And he can also lock down another creature. Spoons is in a commanding position. And Felipe, I bet you're loving this because I know you're a big, you're a big blue white fan. And Azura's Ascendant is doing work right now, and I think Spoons has a commanding lead right now. Let's see if he can keep that. He's going to play, he's going to tap down two mana, and he's going to play his Azura's Guild Mage. Azura's Guild Mage is a 2-2 creature. It has two activated abilities. Pay two mana of any color, one white, and tap down target creature. Now, Spoons can do this as many times as he wants. It's not like Minister of Impediments when you have to tap Minister of Impediments. You can only use that ability once. Azura's Guild Mage, you can constantly use that ability. Now, Azura's Guild Mage also has another ability. Do two mana of any color, a blue and counter target creature ability. Very, very effective for some of J-Rags's. Uh, he can counter J-Rags's um, Rakdos Guild Mage. Spoons is going to fly in. There's nothing that J-Rags can do to stop that Azurius first wing at the moment, so it's going to fly in there and do two damage to J-Rags. Lowering his health to 14. Spoons takes the lead again, and he's going to pass his turn over to J-Rags. Let's see what he can draw, if anything, that can deal with that Azurius first wing, because it's doing a load of damage currently. He does draw a Torpid Moloch. That's a 3-2 defending creature. You can sacrifice three lands and have Torpid Moloch attack. Extremely expensive. Torpid Moloch, if it's an extremely expensive attack card, what you really want to do with that card is, at this point, trade. You don't really want to be using Torpid Moloch to be sacrificing lands. You want to use it mainly as a defender. In some scenarios, maybe late game, if you can squeeze out three damage, maybe that would be good. You can see what Spoons is doing right now is he's using his Minister of Impediments, that tap ability. He's tapping Minister of Impediments and tapping one of the God Hobble Rats. He's also paying three mana and using his Azorius Guild Mage's first activated ability to tap down the other rat. That means that J-Rags only has his Ragamuffin to attack with, a 2-2 creature. J-Rags is going to play a Sadistic Augur Mage. It's a 3-1 creature. Right now it has Summoning Sickness. When the Sadistic Augur Mage dies, each player puts a card from their hand on top of their library. So Sadistic Augur Mage makes J-Rags a little bit more... Um, it, it pushes him in the direction to be more hellbent. And it also disrupts his opponents a little bit because you don't really want to be drawing the same card that you have in your hand. You honestly want to be drawing new cards, especially if you're blue-white. You want to have as many cards in your hand as possible. J-Rags, on the other hand, other hand, doesn't want to have any cards in his hand. He's going to attack with his Ragamuffin, and like usual, Spoons is going to block with that Soul Sworn Jury, who's been mitigating a ton of damage from it for Spoons. So, no damage was dealt by J-Rags, and he's going to pass his turn over to Spoons. He's going to tap his lands and his creatures. Spoons is going to draw, draw another planes and play that planes. Now, Spoons still has access to his Fate's Feathers. He has the ability to go up to 20 health, and he also has that Azurius First Wing still healthy, still ready to attack, and that's been doing the majority of his damage. Spoons' Azorius and Guild Mage is going to be extremely annoying at this point, ladies and gentlemen, especially that tap ability. You can see that Spoons has access to six planes, I believe, and one island. He can use that Azorius Ascendant's ability three times, or not three times, I'm sorry, he can use it twice to tap down J Rags' creatures. So J Rags wants to be attacking, doing as much damage as possible to Spoons, so he can get Spoons down low enough so he can use some of his instants and enchantments to burn Spoons down in the late game. Spoons is going to fly in there. Nothing J Rags can do at the moment to block that first wing. So he's going to take an additional two damage, lowering his life points to 12. Now these are, this is like pecking damage. It's not big damage. Spoons isn't doing 5 damage or 8 damage. This is what the Azurius Ascendant deck does. Felipe, you know this more than anyone else. He's doing pecking damage. He's defending. He's mitigating damage. And he's doing very little damage. But what you can see what he's doing. He's gonna, he was going to use his Minister of Impediments. As soon as j Rex untaps, he's using those Minister of Impediments to re-tap down those cards, making it very difficult for j Rags to actually attack. He's saying, 
Minister Impediments is going to tap a Gob Hobble Rats. Now, I'm going to tap down three additional mana, use my Azorius Guild Mage's first ability, tap down your other Gob Hobble Rats. He's tapping down an additional three lands again, using the Azorius Guild Mage's first ability, tapping down either the, let's see here, is it going to be the Ragamuffin, or is it going to be the uh, Augur Mage? And it looks like it's going to be the Ragamuffin. This is a very, very good play for Spoons, because the Augur Mage only has one toughness. It's a 3-1. This is perfect. That means that the Soul Sworn Jury, a 1-4, is going to be able to not only block, but kill the Augur Mage. Now, J Rags is changing it up a little bit here. He's using the Taste of Mayhem. It's a creature enchantment card. It gives creatures plus two, plus one, I believe, or plus two, plus zero, I believe. Um, I'm going to have to verify that real fast. Let's see here. Uh, Taste of Mayhem, plus two, plus zero. That's right. So that Augur Mage is a five, one. Spoons is simply going to block with the Soul Sworn Zuri, which is a one, four. The Soul Sworn Jury is going to die. But the Augur Mage is also going to die because it's a 5-1. Now, this is a mistake on Jay Rags' part. I think he should have used the Taste of Mayhem on one of his rats. Uh, he could have even used that Taste of Mayhem on the Demon Jester. The Taste of Mayhem also has um, the Hellbent ability, but we'll get, we might get into that later. You know what? We won't get into that at all because I'm going to explain what's happening right now. The Augur Mage dies, so Spoons has to put his fate's feathers on top of his deck and likewise j rags has to put his well has to put a card in his hand on top of his deck and he chose the torpid moloch so we're going to pass it over to smooths spoons and spoons is going to draw into that fate's feathers we already know that because he had to put it back on top of his library because of that sadistic argo mages uh, uh, triggered ability when it hits the graveyard so spoons you know he's going to obviously fly in there deal two damage again to j-rags there's nothing he's gonna there's nothing he's been able to do currently to ward off that first wing's insistent attacks it's been 10 damage that that first wing has dealt to j-rags 10 whole damage i mean this thing has done half of j-rags's life spoons is saying wait up i'm going to tap down my minister of impediments tap down no actually it looks like Spoons is doing exactly what he needs to do. He's waiting for J Rags to play a creature. Um, if the creature has haste, he wants to make sure that he taps down that creature because for, Spoons doesn't really know the Rakdos Bloodsport deck. He's not super familiar with it. And likewise, J Rags isn't super familiar with the Azorius Ascendant deck that Spoons is playing. So these guys have to play extremely cautious. So Spoons is waiting for J Rags to play creatures and see what exactly. Uh, J Rags has before he attacks. Now, J Rags has to declare when he's attacking, and J Rags has declared it. This means that Spoons is going to use his Minister of Impediments to tap down the Gob Hobble Rats. He's also going to pay three mana, tap down another Gob Hobble Rats, and it looks like he's going to pay another three mana to tap down the Rack of Muffin, which means that J Rags currently has no creatures that can attack. Torpid Moloch does have summoning sickness, but ladies and gentlemen, Torpid Moloch is an offender and can't attack anyway. So that means that j Rags has completely been nullified and Spoons is doing an amazing job with this Azurius Ascendant deck. I don't think j Rags really has anything that he can do this turn. All he has in his hand is an Ignorance Bliss and that's not going to pay any dividends for him currently. So he's going to simply pass his turn over to Spoons who is in dynamic control of this game, ladies and gentlemen. Spoons uh, drew into a Benevolent Ancestor. It's a 0-4 creature with Defender. Like I said, the Azorius Ascended deck has a lot of defense. And for all you blue-white fans out there, this is making you so excited to see this game. Because there's so many... It's just... This is what blue-white does. It stalls. It stalls and does very little damage. It uses its own life as a resource. And it can, it can be very frustrating to play against Blue White, as most of you people out there know. So Spoons is going to fly over, do his two damage, lowering to J Rags' health to eight. That means that J Rags is more is 
has half the life points that Spoons currently has. You can see that J-Rex has drawn into his Seal of Fire. This is an enchantment card, and you might think this card is great. Oh wow, you can do two damage to target creature or player. Spoons, uh, j Rice is gonna tap it down and immediately sacrifice it. Sorry about that, ladies and gentlemen, that was my phone. Let me set that down. It's probably actually Spoons um, messaging me. But Spoons is actually gonna use this. Set it down, use it as an enchantment, target Spoons directly, lowering his health to 14. You might think, hey, why, why doesn't why doesn't j Rice just use the Seal of Fire to attack the Azuria's first wing? It's two damage to target creature or player, and the Azuria's first wing has two health. Well, I'll tell you, ladies and gentlemen, the Azuria's first wing, remember, has protection from enchantments. You can view it down there in the bottom right. It has protection from enchantments, and the Seal of Fire is, in fact, an enchantment. It is not going to be able to hit that first wing. So, in my opinion, he should have used the Seal of Fire on, <laughs> honestly, the Guild Mage, the thing that's tapping down all his creatures and not directly to Spoons. I think j Raz is a little flustered, which the Blue-White can definitely be mentally taxing and it can get into your head. It can frustrate you and people understand that. Spoons must be very happy right now because he blew, drew into a second Azorius first wing. There's only two in the Azorius Ascended deck, and he drew into his second first wing. This is great because it's going to double the only damage that he's been able to do to j Rags this entire game. This is going to be great for him. He's going to attack with the Azorius first wing, dealing two damage. He also played his Benevolent An Ancestor. It's a 0-4 creature um, with Defender. It can also negate one source of damage done to a player that Benevolent Ancestor. And we might see that in action. If J-Rags is ever able to stabilize himself, he's getting very low. He only has about two turns left before he's dead. Because next turn, those the other Azurius first wing is going to lose summoning sickness and going to be able to attack. Spoons is using his Minister of Impediments to tap down one of J-Rags' Gob Hobble Rats. He's also using the Azorius Guild Mage's first ability to tap down another Gob Hobbler rat. This lady is crushing these rats, ladies and gentlemen. She's not afraid of a little rat. Um, uh, she's not afraid of any rats, so she's gonna tap those. She's gonna tap those down. Now, the only creatures available to J Rex at this time are the Ragamuffins at two two and the Torpid Moloch, a three two defender. Spoons only has one attacker currently. Now, remember, he can use the Tor Torpid Moloch's activated ability, sacrifice three lands, and attack with it. That's going to be extremely expensive, and it's not worth it, because Spoons is gladly, would gladly take the three damage, or simply block it with the Benevolent Ancestor and take the two damage from the Ragamuffin. Look, the Benevolent Ancestors is zero four, and he can simply prevent another one damage. It, it's a very difficult situation that j Rags finds himself in. Spoons is able to mitigate a lot of damage from j Rags, and I feel like j Rags doesn't have a lot of options. You can see how he has that Ignorance Bliss. What is Ignorance Bliss going to do? Right now, it's the one card preventing him from becoming Hellbent. Very frustrating. And it's also, at the same time, a completely worthless card. Uh, I mean, it has that draw at the end, because if you play Ignorance Bliss at this time, you become Hellbent. You exile all the cards in your hand, but Ignorance Bliss is the only card in his hand. He's losing value on that card. He should have played it a lot earlier when he had that Demon's Gesture. It does have a little bit of value at the end, but he's losing part of the card's value currently, because he has no cards currently in his hand. Now, we'll see what j Rex has. It's a very tricky situation, and he might be bluffing right now. Spoons knows that he has a lot of... Spoons knows that j Rex has a lot of mana up. Spoons knows that j Rex has one card in his hand, but Spoons has no idea what that card is. Is it a Twin Strike? Is it a Douse and Gloom? Is it a... Is it a um, Cackling Flames? These are all cards that could spell trouble for Spoons. He has no idea. But j Rags is actually going to sacrifice three lands and activate his Torpid Moloch. And this is a mistake, ladies and gentlemen, because the Torpid Moloch is simply going to be blocked, simply, by the Benevolent Ancestor with his 0-4. Spoons is like, hey, here we go. We're blocking it. But j Rags isn't done yet. He's actually going to attack, I believe, with his Ragamuffin, maybe? 
No, he's not. He's going to leave the ragamuffin behind. I, I think he should attack with it. There's no real threat to not doing it because Spoons isn't going to block with the Azuri's, Zil Azuri's Guild Mage. He at least is going to do a one damage because what was going to happen is that Spoons was going to block with the Benevolent Ancestor and use its tap ability to prevent one damage from the Ragamuffin. So Spoons would have probably lost one health point, which would have been super lame. Or he could have blocked with his Azurius Guild Mage and use it to prevent one damage. Well, the Benevolent Ancestor's ability is, I believe, target player. So we'll, we'll leave it at that. Spoons is going to fly in there and do four damage to J-Rag, slowing his health to two. To two, ladies and gentlemen. And I, you know what? I think this game is over. I, I don't see Spoons coming back. I don't think there's a draw in Spoons' deck that's going to be able to save him, especially not a Ragamuffin draw. This is another Ragamuffin, a 2-2 creature, and I don't think there's anything that J-Rax can do at this time to come back in this game. Ladies and gentlemen, I think it's actually over. J-Rax is going to tap down, it looks like, four mana. He's going to tap down two to use his Arakdos Signet. So, one, two, three, four, four mana. He's going to use his Ignorant Spliss, so that means that J-Rax is going to be Hellbent. The Gobhobbler Rats are going to become 3-2 creatures. Both of them have the activated ability Regenerate. His Ragamuffin is going to activate. You can, sac you can sacrifice a creature or land and draw a card. And his Torpid Moloch doesn't have Hellbent, so that's not going to work. You, see, you can see the Gobhobbler Rats Hellbent ability up there in the top right, 2-2. They're currently three twos, and they also have Regenerate, which is a great ability, but Spoons doesn't have any mana to use the Regeneration ability. Pay one black mana. Spoons is also, oh my gosh, he's also going to sacrifice three mana and use the Torpid Moloch's ability to become an attacker. Torpid Moloch is going to lose Defender, and he's going to be able to attack. <coughs> Excuse me. This is a big mistake. Um from J-Rags. He needs lands, but it, it's over. It's over at this point. They're just playing out this game. Um, Spoons is saying, hey, I'm going to use my Minister of Impediments. Uh, tap down one of your rats. I'm going to use my Azorius Guild Mage's activated ability. Tap down another rat, and I'm going to use his activated ability to tap down the Torpid Moloch. He's, and Spoon says, bring it on. So, J-Rags can't attack. I don't believe he can attack with that... Uh, that ragamuffin i think that ragamuffin at the top is actually has so many sickness but i think he's using his ragamuffin's activated ability to tap down i don't know what he's doing let me see what he's doing here spoon to say i think there's a little bit of confusion on the field he might be using his ragamuffin's ability to sacrifice the other ragamuffin to draw a card but let's see. Let's see how this plays out, ladies and gentlemen. This might be a um, last-ditch effort to do a little bit of damage, get a little bit of value. But drawing a card at this point is pretty worthless. Let's let's see what happens here. Okay, Spoons is sacrificing his Torpid Moloch using his Ragamuffin's activated ability to sacrifice that tor Torpid Moloch to drive a draw a card. But I believe, if I'm not mistaken, that Ragamuffin that he attacked with has summoning sickness. But Spoons doesn't really care. Uh, he's going to block the Ragamuffin that was attacking him with his Benevolent Antecessor, which is a 0-4 Defender. And that's pretty much game, ladies and gentlemen. Spoons is going to untap all his lands, untap his creatures, and he's going to draw a card. He's going to play his card. He never had to use his Fate's Feathers. He's going to attack with his Zorius First Wings, which is going to do 4 damage to J-Rex, lowering his health down to negative 2. Ladies and gentlemen, that is game, and it looks like Spoons takes game one. Felipe, I hope you enjoyed that Azurius Ascendant gameplay, because I know you were really wanting it. We're going to see game two, if J-Rags can come back from this devastating loss. So, feel free to leave a comment if you want to, leave a like, leave a dislike if you hated it. Um, uh, Sheldon, I know you might hate it again, but uh, I do enjoy you watching the videos and I do enjoy any comments that you guys do leave for me. So thank you for watching and you guys have a great day. Bye.